Hey guys, so here we are uh, back in the garage. Uh, this video is going to talk about the basic equipment you need for big wall climbing. And so what I'm talking about here is mainly like a two day big wall like you'd see in Zion or like another example is Washington Column in Yosemite. And um, I just have like for all of you who are focused on getting into big wall climbing and aid climbing just sort of a selection of gear to sort of model off of for like as a something to aim for to get into big wall climbing this is kind of like this the starter amount of climbing gear you need for any clean aid route any two-day wall sorry any two-day clean aid route so i don't have a hammer i won't have pitons or knife blades or whatever uh, this is mainly for clean aid climbing just hooks cams and other sort of trickery and it's just sort of going to serve as a checklist uh, for a reference for anyone who's looking to get into it. I'm going to talk a little bit about the camping gear you need, mainly climbing gear, uh, but I won't be talking about the uh, consumables like fuel, uh, water, and food. Uh, you can sort of find different suggestions about that all over the internet. And so let's just get started. Starting with my camping supplies, uh, everyone's going to want a sleeping bag for sure. This one's a 15 degree bag. Um, depending on the weather and the season that you're going in, you may can go with less or maybe you want to go with a warmer bag, but that's just the example I have. You're going to want some sort of cooking system. Uh, reactor stove is really nice. This is a jet boil, also really good. This comes with a specific hanging kick that you can get as well. And then there's a fuel canister inside that you may want to consider bringing extra fuel. Bowl and spoon medical kit, uh, wag bags, depending on the climb. Um, right here, I just have the wag bags. Uh, they do make, Metolius will make a waste case. That's what they call it, the Metolius waste case that you can put the wag bags in, which is kind of nice to carry along with you. Or you can check out Chris McNamara's video on how to make your own waste bin, which is really nice. And you just make it out of duct tape and a bottle and stuff. You're definitely going to want a helmet of some sort, climbing helmet. And then here, the harness I have laid out is a specific big wall climbing harness. This is the BD Big Gun. has three gear loops on each side and then one monster one in the back and a full strength rated haul loop. As well as you can see, it's really thick, so it has a lot of padding for being sat in for hours on end. You can look at my uh, harness video if you want more details on the different types of harnesses. Uh, moving to ropes, uh, so this is sort of going to depend a bit on the wall you're climbing, but most walls you just need your lead line. This one's pretty thick. Uh, you want something in the 9.8 to 10.2 range because uh, walls really chew up your ropes and uh, they'll you'll lose them pretty fast. And then here is a static rope. This is uh, for hauling your haul bag. Uh, me personally, I think I bought the wrong kind because I think this is really thick and hard to deal with and walk around with it. This is like 10 mils. Uh, I think uh, in the future I'm going to get an 8 mil haul line. But uh, those are, they definitely get the job done. You definitely need to have a lead line and a haul line. This is uh, an extra line that I just threw out for an example. Uh, I wouldn't exactly bring this this exact line for this job, but... This could be a lower outline <clears throat> if you're doing a wall like L cap or uh, any other wall that requires some sort of pendulum and you have to lower your bag out a decent ways, you're going to want a different line to lower the bag down so that way you can haul it up from the point of gravity and uh, not have your stuff swinging back and forth on the wall. So sometimes, you don't need that for every wall, but sometimes it's worth bringing a lower outline. Moving into personal equipment, uh, for gloves, I have two pairs of gloves here. Uh, more following type pair that are full fingered, uh, also good for repelling if you need to do that. And then half finger gloves for leading because your knuckles really get banged up a lot while aid climbing. So it's nice to have uh, two pairs, but you can easily just bring the one pair too, that's no big deal. Uh, medical kit, which I think I already mentioned. And then we have just the personal stuff I like having, uh, auto block or a hollow block for whatever reason that has a million uses, double link sling, uh, my rescue cord, and that pretty much is for rescuing, a uh, pair of Jumars, 
It's important for the follower to have two Jumars and then uh, the leader or whoever's hauling can get away with just one. So you need at least three. Sometimes it's nice to have four with you. Uh, and I'll have a separate video on how to use these and how to set them up and how to juggle line. So you can watch out for that. Uh, definitely one ATC with you. Again, a million different uses. I personally think it's important for each uh, person to have a Grigri with them because they're also are extremely useful tools. And so um, if uh, my partner doesn't have a Grigri, then I'll just give them an extra one of mine um, because they, they are just very useful tools on the wall. Definitely got to have a progress capture device, either a micro traction or a pro traction. Those seem to be the two main things. You can also rig one up out of a Jumar. Uh, you can look that up later on, but that's how they used to do in the old days. And so these are really nice for uh, ease of use and that tooth is really good. Uh, this is kind of, it's funny how um, different people will say different things about this. Some people will say that this is super important. Others will say that it's not that important, but that's a little swivel that you attach your haul bag to. So as the line twists the, or the line won't get overly twist because the haul bag tends to spin. And so that's a nice little extra device. Uh, a big question is how many lockers to bring? And so I got some laid out here. Um, eight is kind of a good number. This is where we get into a lot of personal preference. And so some people will say eight, some people will say 12 or this or that. Me, I have um, five, 10, 13 laid out right here. And I kind of use them for different things. These standard screw locks are kind of like my usual ones I roll with for my Grigri -gri or my, uh, my clove hitch in. And then I have these triple action lockers, the magnetrons, for special uses, for times when I definitely don't want the carabiner to have as little chance of opening as possible. So I, I tend to use one of these for my haul bag, which is always attached to this thing. And so that way, um, I know that it's about as locked, as well locked as it gets. Another time I'll use one of these is for the portal edge at night, um, hanging up. So very important uses where I have one carabiner and I definitely don't want it to come unlocked. That's what I use these three things for. So they're kind of never really on my harness. They're off attached to haul lines and stuff. And then I use these types of carabiners for whatever I need locking wise. Uh, along with that, you gotta have a bunch of free beaners. What I did here is I took my Alpine draws and then I took the silver carabiner off. And so that gives me 12 free beaners um, to use for whatever, basically holding stuff on the ledge. Uh, you definitely can have too many carabiners with you, but a lot of times it's more of you can't have too many carabiners with you. They're very useful and you can use them for anything. So I actually, I have a few extra free carabiners right here too uh, for whatever you need, but somewhere about 12 to maybe even up to 20, depending on your systems are a good amount of free carabiners to have. Anchors, uh, some people use cord for this, other people use slings or whatever. Uh, sometimes I don't use these specific slings for big wall climbing, but I have them out there. And so that's just, for example, want to have at least two anchors on you. Again, with my rescue cord, if I need to, then I can have three. So that's plenty enough. You never really use more than two anchors at a time. Moving on to other personal gear, uh, along with the Jumars, um, the leader will have to have usually about two of these aid ladders. These are also, their normal name is called the Atriers. These are Alpine Aiders, uh, which maybe aren't the most comfortable, but for what I do, then they work just fine. They do make them with a lot thicker uh, padding on the foot loop, and um, you know they have different styles too for more intense aiding, depending on what you want to do. Um, daisy chains aren't bad to have. Uh, these just connect you to either your eight, um, your ascenders or your atriers or whatever. Uh, another thing that I like to use when actually aid climbing is these. These are the Metolius Easy Daisies. I'm sure those of you who are looking into this uh, type of sport, they, you have heard about these by now. They're really nice to use when on lead, whereas these are really nice to use while jugging. So it's kind of personal preference. And then here I also have this. So like while I'm leading using the ladders, 
this is what my follower uses, which are just foot loops, also made by Metolius. Same vein as the Easy Daisy. And it's literally just an adjustable foot loop up here that you can adjust to the right length you want. And so we have two of those uh, for the follower. So that's pretty much personal gear. For slings, usually you're carrying a big rack of gear. And so I have two slings here, just your standard over the shoulder one, which is kind of the one I tend to roll with. And then also a backpack tube gear loop sling system. Um, this isn't the one I would normally choose, but I got this for free, so I've just been, I just use it because I got it for free. But it is nice to get one that is a chest harness that's been recommended by a lot of people is to have one that also functions as a chest harness. Just something to watch out for. The haul bag. So, here, let me step around. Haul bags are made by many different manufacturers. The two main ones are Black Diamond and Metolius, as well as Portal Edges right there. Um, as far as the haul bags go, uh, usually both companies offer three different styles. One that's like a 30 liter, a 70 liter, and then like a 130 liter. Uh, I think Metolius's names are the the Sentinel, the Half Dome, and the L Cap. And the L Cap is the biggest one. And for your first haul bag, I would recommend going with the biggest one that you have. So like 130 liters or whatever this one is. And uh, that's just because they have a ton of space. And you'd be surprised at how fast you can fill up one of these haul bags, especially for two people. So uh, if you play your cards right, then for a two-day wall, you can easily get two people's worth of gear in here. And then if you play them even more right, you can maybe shove three people, uh, sorry, three people worth of gear in this bag if you have to. But uh, that may be the point to add in one of those smaller howl bags. Um, portal edge, they make two person and single person portal edges. Generally people go with the two person ones. This is the two person one, it's freaking big. But um, definitely works, you definitely wanna practice putting this up. Hopefully I'll make a video on how to put these portal edges up at some point because there's really not that many videos on the internet about it. So I'd like to sort of show folks how to do it, make it a bit easier because it was hard enough for me to learn. Uh, along with that is the portal edge fly, which is, it's just that fly that you see over portal edges. No, you don't exactly need this for every wall. I haven't used this one yet um, for anything really uh, because a lot of overnight walls you can just sort of play good boiler and uh, cowboy camp on the portal edge. But it is a nice thing to have for anything longer than an overnight. And this right here is a special piece of cord. This is my docking tether, uh, which is just 15 feet of cord with an eight knot in the middle. Uh, I'll show you how I set up my haul bag for hauling in a, another video as well. I'm planning a whole big wall series. But um, that's just sort of what you use to attach the haul bag to the anchor. And along with that, I have a Pepsi bottle that's cut out as a knot protector. So I feed my haul line through here, tie it in at this point with that swivel, and then this will protect my knot from being um, getting abrasion against the wall. So that's kind of a nice cheap way to do it. They don't even offer commercial ones because they expect everyone to do that sort of thing. All right, moving on to the rack. And so the rack is completely dictated by the wall that you're climbing, but this is a good starter rack before you get in, or to aim for, and then you can sort of play it to whatever specific route you want to do. Starting with quick draws, I got 12 Alpine draws there. Maybe I won't bring that many on a specific climb, it just depends, but that is a good number to bring. Uh, four sport draws, just for extra quick draws, they, they do come in handy a lot, you know, in any form of climbing. As far as cams go, I just have a quick selection laid out here. Uh, no, not every wall you uh, climb will involve big gear. So the five and the six, oftentimes, that's kind of where it may fall off. You may not need one at all. Or sometimes you'll need a two fives, two sixes, maybe even something bigger like a Valley Giant or a Merlin. Uh, and then from here on, 
it's nice to have a triple rack. So three point threes, point fours, five, seven fives, ones, two, threes, and three fours actually do come in handy. So it's nice to have triples in all those sizes, as well as micro cans are really, they really come in handy. So what I have here are just a, for an example, a set of aliens and a few X fours. I actually have a lot more micro cams than this, just all in a pile right there. Uh, which I, you know, like a lot of walls, you'll end up using a lot of micro cams. Along with that, and these guys are a bit more popular in granite, like Yosemite, but it's good to have a set of offset cams. So, 0.4 lobes on this side, 0.5 on the other side, and then they just sort of go down all that way. This is the only set of offsets I have, and I'm thinking about getting a, another set, because uh, they are really nice for pin scars and stuff like that. As far as stoppers go, it's nice to have two sets of stoppers. So this is uh, two full sets of stoppers right here in the pile. Uh, it's also nice for you to have a nut tool and your follower to have a nut tool so both people have a nut tool. Uh, offset stoppers, they come in handy for everything. And then right here is a set of micro stoppers. So these also are quite useful. And with these, I also have offset micro stoppers. That's what the other thing is all about. Moving on to, I'm gonna come back to those two, but hooks. So depending on your area, uh, you may hook a lot, and then other areas you may not hook at all. If you're climbing in Zion, they recommend, or like, you're not supposed to use cam hooks in Zion. So what these guys are is you hook them into the crack, and then when you stand on them, they'll bend this way and just twist right into the crack. And they're super nice and solid. Uh, and so I don't really use those that much because I mainly climb in Zion. But in Zion, you do use a lot of these other hooks. This is called a grappling hook. You just hang it on the wall and then you sit down on it. These guys are cliffhanger hooks. And then these are talon hooks because they got the three spikes. You also hear these called bat hooks. Sometimes these, these hooks are called big hooks. Uh, generally, when they just say hook in the topo, they're talking about your standard cliffhanger hook. Just for future reference, you know, sometimes these have different names. Mainly these guys, talon or bat hook, you need to know what you're getting there. They're used for different things. This guy is more for flat walls, sort of on crystals. And then lips, like big lips or nor smaller lips are for those hooks. Uh, and then cam hooks, you use them more in Yosemite, which I haven't really climbed any big walls in Yosemite, uh, but that's gonna change soon. Again, since I climb in Zion, or when I do big wall climbing, I do it in Zion, I have some more specific Zion type uh, protection. Uh, here's a set of ball nuts. I just got both of these too, but um, this is a set of ball nuts, which you find, uh, which are useful at Zion. Uh, you also hear these called low walls like L-O-W-E, like Alex Lowe balls. And um, basically you just slide this part back. It works like a cam. You slide that copper part back, slide it in, and then it'll shoot up and then wedge in the really thin seam. And they go pretty small. Here's the smallest one right there. And cam hooks too. Now I don't really use cam hooks like ever. In Washington, they just, if you ask me, they aren't really super useful. Uh, I only bought these because of Zion, and so I actually, one of these red cam hooks I got off of Mount Shucks and someone had it stuck in the rock, and uh, I managed to fiddle it out, so that's why I have two. But then I just have your standard set of cam hooks. These two, the white and the black, these are specific age sizes. This one's only rated at like 0.3, or sorry, 3 kilonewtons or something like that. This one's like 4 or whatever. So whenever you're climbing, you tend to use just these four, but these aid sizes could come in handy. And no, when I'm climbing, I won't bring all the cam hooks, sorry, all the cam, tri cams and all the ball nuts. I'll just sort of bring like maybe the more common sizes like these first three or maybe only these two. And then uh, maybe just the red, the pink, and then maybe the, this guy, what is this, brown? Yeah, the brown. Uh, but maybe just two reds, two pinks, or something like that. Uh, whatever the more useful sizes are. I probably won't bring the whole kit unless the topo demands I do that. I also threw out this thing. I kind of don't use these in aid climbing too much. 
This is a Yates Screamer. Uh, and so if you don't know what a Screamer is, then look it up. But essentially this light grade stitching will rip when you fall on this thing. And this will expand to like a meter, a meter and a half. And it'll help the force on the protection when you fall on it. So if you have a pretty bad piece of pro, then if you fall on this, then it could help absorb that shock a little bit and keep it in the wall. You use them a lot in ice climbing. That's where I use them a lot. But um, it's also good for big walling and aid climbing. Got these things right here, which you can see I don't have too many of them. These are called rivet hangers. They come in a couple different sizes. Um, and then a lot of times on your first or couple big walls, you won't need to use these um, unless you're climbing a specific wall that calls for them. Sometimes you'll have, you know, four. Sometimes you'll bring one or two, and then other times you'll bring a lot more. Uh, this right here, I'm not exactly sure what the name is, but essentially if you just have a rivet, which in America we call them rivets, where it's just the bolt but no hanger. So you can take that and stick it in the bolt and then slide it down. And then you can clip into this as well with a carabiner and then stand up on that. So it's kind of like another form of a rivet hanger. But then these other rivet hangers are, they do the same thing. Another thing you could always do is take a nut, like uh, maybe a smaller nut than this, pull it down and then hook that on the rivet, slide the nut up, and then that's fine to get past a few moves. So you only really want to do this if you're getting miles of rivets going up the wall. All right, guys, that's just about everything for a beginner big wall gear setup. Um, I may have left out a thing or two just when I was putting all this together. So uh, if I did, then please leave a comment mentioning about what other stuff you like to bring with you, as well as uh, feel free to add in anything with your experience uh, for big walling. I think this is a pretty good list. It's not... It's a lot of gear for sure, but um, it's not a huge amount of crap. Like you see the, the really serious aid climbers with their hammers and their pitons and all that stuff. This is just for one, two day, three day clean big walls uh, and uh, getting started, as well as just giving you guys sort of a landmark to go for if you're looking into big wall climbing. I will have more videos coming up with like hauling, jugging a line, setting up a portal ledge, putting the fly on the portal ledge. Uh, I don't know when I'm gonna get a chance to make those, but I do wanna make a whole big wall series because there's not too much information about that on the internet. Thanks, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.